apply that same basis to something like Loving versus Virginia, the Supreme Court case that legalized interracial marriage. Should so when it comes to, to when it comes to issues, you can't have it both ways. Uh, when you uh, want that diversity to shine within our federal system, uh, there are going to be uh, rules and uh, proceedings. They're going to be out of sync with maybe what other states would do. It's the beauty of the system. And uh, that's where uh, the differences among points of view in our 50 states ought to express themselves. And I'm not saying that rule would apply in general, depending on the topic, but it should mostly be in general because it's hard to have it on issues that you just are interested in when you deny it for others with a different point of view. I gotta say, if there's one thing that really drives me up a wall, it's intellectual dishonesty. And if you're like Indiana Senator Mike Braun here, you're too weak to say how you truly feel, so you have to codify your words and throw blame to make you look less horrible to the average voter. I'll be candid with you, I got particularly riled up by this video interview he did with reporters earlier this year. Senator Braun knows what he said and that if enough people think the Democrats are hypocrites because they've wanted federal protections while at other times they've trusted states to outperform a conservative federal government, that takes the focus off his hypocrisy and misleading language. He's saying in this video that there is beauty in, what a choice of words, diversity of opinion among states on most issues. He's saying most issues have a valid conservative counterpoint. And somehow that includes interracial marriage. So you would be okay with the Supreme Court leaving the question of interracial marriage to the states? Yes, I think that that's something that uh, if you're not wanting the Supreme Court to weigh in on issues like that, uh, you're not going to be able to have your cake and eat it too. I think that's hypocritical. And he's using the precedent of removing Roe as an excuse to give conservative state lawmakers a chance to take away federal rights for interracial couples. To make Americans realize that the right to interracial marriage is not constitutional. It feels like these lawmakers want to restore and secure the white cis majority to its pre-civil rights level. The fact that the Supreme Court had to rule on interracial marriage at all was because of the preventative measures states took in the name of states' rights. Senator Braun conveniently forgets to mention this. The history of legal interracial marriage is not that long, as it was federally recognized in 1967, 55 years ago in Loving v. Virginia. And despite that ruling, insubordinate states chose not to take their segregating laws out of their constitutions. Alabama waiting until 2000, 22 years ago, to do so only because a majority of voters sought to change their constitution's language. So based on historical precedent and the commentary like Senator Braun's and others, we can see that conservative state lawmakers will work their hardest to make life more difficult for those they don't like. And they'll stall as long as they have to, to honor civil rights. And no, I'm not reading too far into this or overreacting. You heard him being asked specifically about interracial marriage being relegated to the states. Listen to this interaction again. So you would be okay with the Supreme Court leaving the question of interracial marriage to the states? Yes, I think that that's something that uh, if you're not wanting the Supreme Court to weigh in on issues like that, uh, you're not going to be able to have your cake and eat it too. I think that's hypocritical. After the interview, he backtracks with a statement to Politico. I misunderstood that question. He listed a bunch of cases, and so we had to get out a statement to counter that immediately. Completely misunderstood when he asked it. 
we were talking about the underlying case of Roe v. Wade. And then he listed a bunch of other stuff, and that one was in there. Didn't even realize it. Uh huh. He also says this in the interview about Griswold versus Connecticut. Well, you can list a whole host of issues when it comes down to whatever they are. Uh, I'm going to say that they're not going to all make you happy uh, within a given state, but that we're better off having states manifest their points of view rather than homogenizing it across the country as Roe versus Wade did. But he never corrects his statements on Roe and Griswold. Roughly a year ago, Braun signed a resolution that condemned CRT being taught in schools, saying America's kids need to know that the fundamental values of our country are liberty, equality, and opportunity for all, not racism and oppression. I'm proud to join my colleagues in speaking out against divisive political agendas being pushed in our classrooms. Liberty, equality, opportunity for all, diversity of thought, all things that were not wholly guaranteed after the Civil Rights Act. A little later in summer 2021, Braun, Kevin Kramer, and Marco Rubio introduced the Protect the Equality and Civics Education Act, or PEACE. That prohibits federal funds allocated to schools who teach divisive concepts. So he's not racist, as he says, but he thinks racism shouldn't be discussed in the educational process, and he believes in overturning federal decisions about marital privacy and choice. He's not speaking up for rights when they're at risk of being taken away. Sounds like Loving versus Virginia, which was a precedent to Roe v. Wade, isn't safe from the chopping block. <laughs> 